Krimo Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The weak South African economy is affecting the local airline sector. Keith Campbell reports on how one local airline group, Comair, is meeting the challenge. Comair is South Africa's largest private sector airline group and operates the British Airways in South Africa and Kalula low-cost carrier brands. Comair CEO Eric Fenter explains how the company is meeting the challenge posed by the weak local economy. Comair has obviously been in the passenger carriage business for uh, about 70 years now. And as the economy has got a little weaker, we've seen that there hasn't been growth in the passenger market in South Africa. So we're sitting with a roughly the same passenger volumes in the domestic market since around 2008. And because of that stagnation in the market, we decided rather than having all our eggs in the passenger carriage market, we need to look at diversifying a bit further into areas that do show much better potential for growth in the short term. So we've been working on four main legs to our diversification strategy. Uh, the first being our training centre, a pilot training centre, which we're in today. And that's been going for quite some time now. We're training about 32 different other external airlines in our training centre. Um, and of course it's very good for the country because it brings in foreign currency, etc. Our other leg that we're working on is catering. So we're doing our own uh, in-house catering now for the airline. But we're also starting to produce products for external parties that are interested in, in specialised meals, etc. And we expect there's still scope to grow there quite a lot. Um, the third component is our travel business and there we have brands such as Kalula Holidays, uh, Empty Beds, um, African Dream Holidays etc. And our focus there is to bring more foreign tourism into the country. Again very important for South Africa balance of trade because it's a lot of foreign currency income, uh, it's effectively an export. Um, but a lot of work to be done there still in terms of technology platform etc. But it's going well. And the fourth piece of it of course is our lounges. Uh, we've got our five lounges domestically, one of them being the Khautre and Santon Slow Lounge. And then we also have the International Lounge at uh, ORT, which we built and are supplying lounge capacity also to KLM and Air France in that lounge. So those are basically the four main legs that we're working on in terms of diversification. Uh, for now, the airline still remains our core business and I think it's going to remain that way for some time to come. But in terms of short-term growth, we see the growth coming from the diversification. Captain Glenn Warden is Commerce Senior Flight Manager, Commercial Flight Operations. He describes the facilities and courses provided by the company's flight training centre. A training centre currently exists um, with four training bays for the full flight simulators, one of which is uh, an ATR simulator, which is a joint venture we have with ATR. And we have a fifth bay as well, which is a fixed base uh, training device as well. Naturally, we're surrounded by a lot of classrooms that are uh, teaching a lot of soft skill matters that are associated with an airline, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, crew resource management training, dangerous goods training, and also the supplementary subjects required for an airline pilot. So we have a major diversification of, uh, of subjects that we address. It's a zero to hero program, really, for a person coming from a flight school. So those that are coming with low times from a flight school, we are then provide that bridging which is high performance training, multi-crew coordination training to teach how to work together as a, as a combined crew. Then we go into the jet orientation, how to teach them to fly a jet. And then we move on to the type endorsement for the Boeing 737, 200, 300, 400, 500, 700 and 800 series aircraft. The cabin crew training is uh, conducted in a uh, retired Boeing 737 300 series aircraft that we took out of commission and instead of converting it into uh, scrap metal we decided to use the entire aircraft in its uh, complete configuration to do realistic training for the cabin crew because the pilot, crew, the pilot body always had the privilege of having full flight simulators and fixed base simulators to train with but the cabin crew basically had a lot of academic training and we found that the result was far superior by giving them actual exposure to an aeroplane. In other words, the configuration of the aeroplane itself is as you would find it on the line. So you have your uh, club class or your business class section, plus your traveler section, your economy section, and then on board we have the classroom. So in other words, the instructor has the ability to have a real tactile engagement with the, with the tools on board. So the students have uh, exposure to the equipment they'll be using on board as the safety managers, uh, safety officers uh, that they are. Other news making headlines. AfriSAM's latest merger approach. Cement manufacturer AfriSAM made its third and newest merger approach to PPC this week, while PPC announced that it had received two rival offers. During a recent visit of AfriSAM's plant in the Northern Cape, 
Acting CEO Rob Vessels outlined why he believed there was so much talk of industry consolidation. Across the world right now, we're obviously dealing with a situation where there's a lot of oversupply of cement. We're seeing a lot of cement actually traveling around on ships and it's upsetting local dynamics. It has done so in South Africa. South Africa itself, we've had uh, new, new entrants come into the market. We've seen it in some of the other African markets. So generally oversupplied and then also demand is quite flat in South Africa. Some of our other operations, uh, demand is a little bit better but also in oversupply. So I think for some period now you're going to find the cement producers under a fair amount of pressure. Margins have compacted a lot, obviously makes it quite difficult to generate the cash to do the big capital investments. Challenging, challenging period in the industry and I think that's likely to lead to more consolidation. Consolidation allows people to get their costs under control better, find better routes to market, uh, compete more effectively. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.